All right, it's the most hotly anticipated racing event of the century, featuring a race between Johnny Speed and David Dust. The thing is, one of them understands algebra, and one of them doesn't. I don't understand how to draw cars from an overtop perspective, but that's not relevant to solving this cute little problem. So these are our blazing fast racing cars. I'll draw these little arrows just to indicate that, you know, even though they don't look it, they are cars and they are going somewhere and they're going fast. Okay, so these two racers take two different strategies to this race. Let's say in purple, we have Johnny Speed. And what Johnny Speed is doing is going a blistering 120 miles per hour throughout this entire race. On the other hand, our orange driver, Mr. David Dust, is taking a slightly different approach. He's actually going to drive at a leisurely 110 miles per hour throughout the first half of this track, but then he's going to go 130 miles per hour in the second half of the track. So then the question, of course, from this information is who is going to win this race? Is it going to be Johnny Speed going 120 miles per hour the whole time, or is it going to be David Dust, who goes 110 miles per hour through the first half of the course or track, and 130 miles per hour for the second half? I, of course, invite you to pause the video and figure this out yourself, or you could just leave a guess in the comments. It's easy easy to jump to assumptions in this problem and make a mistake in interpreting the information. If you do that, you might come to the conclusion that Johnny Speed and David Dust are actually going to tie because their average speeds are the same, right? Johnny Speed's average is of course 120 miles per hour because he's going at that speed for the whole race. And David Dust's average speed is also 120 miles per hour because it's halfway between 110 and 130. So if their average speeds are the same, then they must tie. But if you think their average speeds are the same, that is a misunderstanding of what's actually important here. It's true that their average speeds over, you know, the fixed distance of the track are the same. Johnny Speed's going 120 miles per hour for the whole track. David Dust is going 110 for one half of the track and 130 for the other half of the track. But this is a race. It's not necessarily the track distance that is important so much as it is time and who finishes in the lesser amount of time. That's what's most important. So it's not really an accurate interpretation to weigh the 110 miles per hour and the 130 miles per hour of David Dust equally. You'd have to weigh them equally to say his average speed is 120. But the thing is, he's going 130 miles per hour for the whole second half of the track, which means however long it takes him to get through the first half, it's definitely not going to take him that long to get through the second half. And then the question is, does he get through the second half of the track fast enough to end up outpacing Johnny Speed? Well, let's put some letters to this stuff, do a little bit of algebra, solve an inequality, and figure out who wins this race. Like I said, it's time that's important here. So let's write these things in terms of time. The time that it takes Johnny Speed to finish the race, let's say we write that as TJ. The time it takes Johnny Speed to finish the race is going to be the distance of the track, so let's just say D, the distance of the track, divided by Johnny Speed's speed, which is 120 miles per hour. Since the distance D is in miles and we're dividing by speed 120 miles per hour, this is going to give us the time it takes Johnny to finish the race in hours. Similarly, we can find the time that it would take David to finish this race if we say the track has a length of D, that's D miles. Well, David Dust is going 110 miles per hour throughout the first half of this distance. So really, sorry, I should have written this a little differently. We should cut that distance in half. For half of this distance, 
David is going 110 miles per hour, and so we divide half of the distance by 110. This tells us how long it takes David to get through the first half of the course. But then for the other half of the course, so again I'll put D over 2, for the other half of the course, he's actually going 130 miles per hour. So this is how long it takes him to finish the second half. So here's the time it took Johnny to finish the race. Here's the time it took David to finish the race. They're both totally expressed in terms of D, the distance of the track or course. And so all we have to do is compare these two quantities and figure out which one is smaller to see who won the race. What you can do with these inequality situations where you don't know the relationship yet is put a sort of pretend inequality. You can separate the numbers with an empty box. So for example, I'll put D over 120 over here. That's the time it took a Johnny Speed to get through this race. And then I'll put a little box. I, I could put a less than sign here, or I could put a greater than sign here. The thing is, I don't actually know what should go there. And so I'll just put the little box as a placeholder. And this is getting compared to the time that it takes David to finish the race, which we discussed before. All right, so there's the comparison. This compares in some way to this. Johnny's time compared in some way to David's time. Now, to start reducing these fractions and to get these numbers to be more manageable, let's multiply everything by 10. You can see that that'll cancel out all of those zeros. Now that we've multiplied everything by 10 to get rid of those zeros, we might as well also double everything. If we double everything, we'll also get rid of those divisions by 2. So then on the left, 2d over 12, well, we could reduce that to just d over 6. We don't know what the inequality sign should be there, so we'll just put the empty box. And then we have d over 11, that's what's left in that term. And then in this term, what's left is d over 13. Okay, this is much more manageable. Which quantity is bigger? An easy way to answer that question is to just multiply by a number that will finish eliminating all of these fractions. If we do that, we can just combine these D terms on the right and then see which side has more Ds. Now, the least common multiple of these denominators that we can multiply by to eliminate the fractions would be 11 times 13 times 6. So 11 times 13 times 6, figure out what that is, and then multiply this whole thing by that number, that'll cancel out the fractions. Multiplying by 11 is actually really easy. So the first thing I'll do for this multiplication is 13 times 6, and that's going to be 60 plus 18, so 78. And then to multiply 78 by 11, you can use this neat little trick. So you start by taking the first digit, which is seven, and then add the two adjacent digits, that would be 15. Since it's 15, we actually have to kind of carry the one over to that first digit. And there's the five from the 15, and then end with the last digit, which is eight. That might seem overcomplicated for this problem, but you can adapt this strategy to much harder multiplications by 11. So final answer there is 858. Now multiplying everything by 858, what's gonna happen is the factor of six will cancel out with 858, just leaving behind 13 and 11. 13 times 11 is 143. So we would have 143D on the left. Again, that's just multiplying this, d over 6, by 858. Now on the right, on the other side of our empty box, d over 11 times 858 is just going to leave 6 times 13, which we know is 78. So that would be 78D. And then d over 13 times 858, that would just leave the 6 and the 11, which is 66. So 66D. All right, so what is it that we have on the right side? 78D plus 66D. Well, 70 plus 60 is 130. So 78 plus 66 is 144. Of course, it's 144D. Just barely bigger than the side on the left. So the proper sign that goes in the inequality box here is less than. So it was the quantity on the left side that is smaller, which means that guy is the guy who won the race. Who is that guy? Well, that's the guy who is going 120 miles per hour for the entire race, throughout the entire track. And that was our good friend, the champion, 
Johnny Speed. So tell me what you thought. Did you think it was going to be a tie or did you think that 130 miles per hour of David Dust was actually going to pull him ahead in the second half? Or maybe all along you thought Johnny Speed was going to be the guy. I would have guessed David Dust, you know, that 130 miles per hour for the second half of the course. I thought that was going to do it. But once you run the numbers, Johnny Speed's our guy. That's the champion. Be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.